Hello everyone, I'm Fuzzy Bebarian and welcome to the first part in my series on how to beat Mortal Shell. If you're new to Mortal Shell or are just plain struggling with the game, then this guide series will be for you. I'll walk you through everything you need to do to beat the game in less than half the time most people will. Just know this isn't a 100% walkthrough though, instead I'll be focusing on the most efficient way to proceed from the very start of the game so that you can become as powerful as possible before fighting a single boss. Mortal Shell is a really difficult game, but I want you to get to a point where you can steamroll it. So let's get to it. The first thing you'll face is the tutorial area, where you'll learn about basic moves and the hardening mechanic. Then at the end of the tutorial, you'll fight a boss named Haddon. Now 99% of players will not beat Haddon the first time, as he's very hard for such an early encounter. You also only get one shot at him. If you win, that's fine, but if you lose, you won't get a second shot, and you will have to proceed into the real starting area of the game. But I want you to beat him, no matter what. If you beat him, he'll reward you with 5 glimpses that you otherwise will miss out on, and these will give you a great head start in the game right from word go. Now I have a separate video on how to beat Haddon in the tutorial that might help you, showing a complete walkthrough of the tutorial itself. I'll leave a link to that in the description. But the basic strategy goes like this. After you complete the attack and Harden tutorial part which you're seeing on screen, immediately turn left and you'll find a mortal token. Don't use it yet, uh, there are 3 mortal tokens in the tutorial level to find before fighting Haddon. These tokens help you get health back during the fight if you need it, so we want to pick them all up before the fight. The second one is right here, and the third one is just before you go in and fight Haddon. And to do that you go through the big archway there, so instead of going through that archway, turn left before it, and you'll find the third token hiding here. These tokens will auto equip to your inventory, so just pressing up on the D-pad will activate them during the fight when you need them. The way to guarantee a win is like this. Do a heavy attack, immediately harden, do a light attack, then retreat. Wait for your harden mechanic to come up again. Once it's up, do a heavy attack, harden, do a light attack, and retreat. Okay, so let's go in and fight him. As soon as we head in, he'll run and leap at you. Just dodge away at the last minute. In fact, always dodge away from all of his attacks. Make enough space to keep out of his reach at all times. He'll often harden when you do your own attack, so to stop him preventing you from hurting him, just move toward him a little. Moving toward him will trigger him to harden when his own hardening mechanic isn't on a cooldown. When he hardens, just wait for it to end and then hit him with the heavy attack, harden yourself, do a light attack, then retreat. Just remember when you do your heavy attack and then harden, you want to hold your harden until he hits you. That causes him to stagger a bit, allowing you to do your light attack safely and allowing you to retreat safely. Let's talk about those mortal tokens. If he hits you and you lose some health, wait for him to harden and activate a token. Once activated, next time he hits you while you are hardened, you'll get some health back. Just don't activate the token when he isn't in a hardened state, as activating it usually triggers him to attack you and you won't be able to get to safety while he does. So wait until he hardens, then activate your token, and then continue with your normal heavy attack, harden, light attack and retreat strategy, and you'll get some health back midway through when he hits you while you're hardened. Now I'm not going to show the whole fight here as it does take a while, I've already cut some of it out just to show you the mortal tokens. I have another full video on how to beat him using this strategy, so if you need that video I'll put a link to it in the description. Otherwise, just do the strat over and over until you get the reward. If he beats you and you die, the game will put you out in the world. If that happens, I recommend quitting to the main menu and replaying the tutorial and trying again. I expect you will die once or twice while you're trying to get a handle on this and that's okay. The strategy itself 100% works and once you do have a handle on it, you'll sail through. Just restart the tutorial as many times as it takes to get the win. Ultimately, you'll be glad you did no matter how frustrating that might feel, as this strategy alone can just about beat every enemy in the game. If you learn it now, you'll have zero issue with some of the tougher enemies you'll face later on. Okay, moving on to the very start of the game. After you find yourself crawling through a tunnel, you'll emerge in this area. There's nowhere else to go but straight. At the end of this area, there's a right. You can take a right or you can take a left. You want to take a left and you'll find the very first shell of the game. All you have to do is interact with it and you'll inhabit it. Once you're in the shell, if you access your main menu area, you'll see along the top there's a bunch of menu items. The middle one is shells. If you go to shells, you'll see the shell that you've inhabited is listed as an unknown shell. You have to learn the name of the shell before you can start unlocking all of its skills and perks. We'll see how to do that in a moment, but for now I'll let you know this is the Haros shell. You can see his durability, stamina and resolve are all middle tier there, meaning his stats are all average. 
Don't worry about that, later in the game when we unlock his best perks, he becomes one of the best shells in the game, all factors considered. You'll see what those perks are once we unlock his name, and for that, you can see there we need 250 tar to do it. Tar is the game's currency, and we get that by killing enemies and finding items that give us tar. Okay, that's enough of that, let's keep going. Uh, so just follow the right way that we didn't go before. Actually, open up your inventory, and if you look in your inventory, you'll see the Glimpse of Reverie. That's the reward we got from killing Haddon in the tutorial. If you use that now, you'll see down the bottom right, five glimpses are added to our uh, total glimpse number. So that was the point of killing Haddon, so that we can get those five glimpses, and you'll see why we want those in a moment. Okay, we're in Forgrim now. Down the left, just at the left there, you'll see this Welt Cap. If you pick that up, Welt Caps are basically like healing flasks. They get added to your inventory and you can use them to heal yourself over time. You can see that Welt Cap on the ground now is on a timer. You can pick them up as frequently as that timer runs out. So what you want to do for the whole game is keep your eye on those Welt Caps. Whenever the timer is up, you want to pick them up and get as many in your inventory as you possibly can. Now if you follow where I'm going now, you can interact with this statue if you want. These are all over the game and there's some that will give you lore, like transcripts. There's others that will show you basically where you're meant to go. This one is showing us where we're meant to go. We'll be heading to that castle looking structure shortly. It doesn't really do anything else for you though. You don't actually have to interact with them. So this corpse has a glimpse of futility uh, on it, which is another type of glimpse. There are various types of glimpses and basically the more you use them, the more glimpses you'll get from them. We only got one from that because our familiarity with that type of glimpse is only at one. But yeah, the more you use it, the more you'll get. And always look around for chests. In this case, that chest had a remnant of tar. That remnant of tar, if you use that, will give us 80 tar and that's getting us close to the 250 tar we need to learn the name of our shell. Okay, so let's keep going towards that structure that we saw before. The game will point it out, pretty much tells you you should go there at the start, and so you should. Between us and that structure though, you can see there's an enemy there, uh, and another glowing item on the left. That glowing item is a remnant of tar, so we want to pick that up to get some more tar. We'll use that in a moment, but first let's kill this enemy. Killing him will give us some more tar as well. These are all the enemies surrounding the uh, big structure we're going to are basically weak enemies, but they can kill you, so everything in Mortal Shell can kill you. But let's just take all of these guys out and earn some tar while we're at it. It's not a lot of tar, but you still, it, it all adds up with each, each kill. He drops some rotten food. I'll talk about that in a moment this guy and had to harden up to stop that guy from hurting me and now we'll kill this guy and he drops some moonshine so if you open up your inventory some of uh, some of those items will have auto been auto equipped to your quick items rotten food basically gives you a small amount of health back but it takes resolve to do it uh, and that loot we picked up earlier just use that over and over to learn the familiarity system basically and inferior moonshine basically gives you some resolve but takes a bit of your health to do it so we'll just use that remnant of tar and you can see now with the killing those enemies and using the remnants of tar we have more than the 250 amount of tar that we need to learn the name of our shell as far as items go though, I'm going to recommend don't use any, save them for boss fights or when you really need them. I'll tell you what they do as we get them and save you from having to use them because you don't know what an item does until you use it for the first time, so instead of wasting them, just hold on to them for now. I'm also killing these guys to earn a little bit of tar and maybe see what they drop. And also to get this, sitting on the ground behind them is another glimpse. This one's a glimpse of wisdom. Won't be added to our quick items because those are already full. We can add it manually if we want, but we'll just use it. And that's another two, uh, another two glimpses. So we're now up to eight. If you drop down there, see this big guy walking towards you? You can kill him if you want, but just for the purpose of this guide, I'm just gonna let him 
turn around and go away so we don't fight him. If you go up to this post here and whack it, this structure, it will reveal some lore, which also gives you a glimpse of wisdom. Lore is hidden throughout Mortal Shell. If you know where to smash things, just hit everything, you can reveal it. Sometimes it's pretty obvious, other times it isn't. So we've got another gl glimpse of wisdom and that's taken us up to 10 glimpses. So now we've got a ton of glimpses and we've got enough tar to learn the name of our shell. So let's head up to that structure. Oh yeah, and watch out for those traps. They're everywhere and they'll take a little bit of damage off you, a little bit of health off you. Plus they can get you in trouble if you step in one while you're fighting enemies. Okay, so here's the door to the structure. And before we go in, there is a welt cap here. Try to grab the welt caps and put their timer on every time you can. So you'll know that there's a welt cap there and over in this area, there's a tar spore, which I'll explain in a moment. Try to grab these every time you come out of this structure, which you'll do a few times, just to build them up in your inventory. Okay, now that task ball we picked up, what task ball does is it makes you immune to poison, but the first time you take it, it will actually poison you. So before interacting with Sester Janessa, the person in front of us, use your task ball. Interacting with her will instantly heal you and cure you and remove the poison status effect. Okay. So this is the best time to use that for the first time. It won't poison you again after that. So you can see there, we're no longer poisoned, we're no longer losing health, but we now have gotten past the poisoning yeah. stage of that task bore, and future task bores will just make you immune to poisoning. So now if you hold down your obtain button, you'll be able to learn the name of your shell because we had the 250 tar needed. I'll let you read or listen to the Harris the Vassal speech that you get as a result. But what we have now is all of the skill tree of this shell are now available to read. So when we unlock it, we'll have hardened cooldown is reduced by 25%. Next is a perk that rapidly refills our stamina every time we harden. Kill two enemies fast to reset our hardened cooldown. We can have our hardening last twice as long upon being broken, which basically means when you harden, if an enemy hits you and knocks you out of the hardened state, the perk of being hardened lasts for a little bit longer, which basically means even though you're no longer hardened, you won't take any damage as if you were. Pretty cool perk. The next one is regain last chance upon defeating enough foes. In Mortal Shell, if you lose all your health, you get knocked out of your shell. You can get back in your shell again, but if you get knocked out again, then you're dead. What this does is, after having been knocked out of your shell once, if you kill enough enemies, it will reset that. So that if you do lose all your health again and get knocked out of your shell, you won't die and you'll have another chance to get back in your shell. A pretty cool perk. The next perk is Harden in the air to create an area of impact upon landing and killing enemies in that area of impact may drop an additional glimpse. It's not really much of a perk, I don't really use it that much, but it's there, so probably leave that one to last. The next one is you can get a kick that knocks enemies off balance. It's a pretty cool perk, but it does use resolve, so you'll probably use it sparingly, if at all. This one's called Accretion of Yearning, and it gives us a chance to get a glimpse every time we kill an enemy. Right from the start of the game, this is the best skill to unlock for Harris because by getting more glimpses, it helps us to unlock all the other skills a lot faster. You can see there we need 1100 tar to unlock the skill and eight glimpses. That's one of the reasons why we killed Haddon in the tutorial. His five glimpses combined with the three that we already found on the way to where we are now means we have more than enough glimpses to unlock this straight away. We just need to go out and get the tar, which we'll do shortly. This perk gives us uh, some health back when we pick up a glimpse, which is pretty cool because Harris can cause glimpses to drop, but not, not frequently enough for that to really matter. So we'll actually pick that up probably as our very last skill. It's not something we'll make a great deal of use of. What we will make use of though is Accretion of Dominance. This one gives us a chance to get an additional glimpse if we kill an enemy after hardening. You have to kill them immediately after hardening, but if you do that, there's a good chance you'll get a glimpse from them and this will help us level up fast, so we'll definitely be unlocking this as our second priority perk. Okay, let's continue. You see we got the Effigy of Haros there. That's in your inventory now. It's a single-use item. You can get more of them, but it's a single-use item that enables you to swap to the Haros shell if you're in a different shell. For now though, we don't use that. We're going to go up here and we're going to pick up the Tarnished Seal, which you get by interacting with the big bird fella. The Tarnished Seal is this item here, and what the Tarnished Seal does, it'll explain it to you in a, like a tip window 
It basically enables you to parry in the game. Now the thing about parrying is it's very difficult to do in Mortal Shell because the timing is a bit finicky and it takes a fair bit of practice to get it down. Uh, for that reason a lot of people don't like to parry in Mortal Shell, a lot of people complain that it's too hard and they just don't do it. Fortunately you don't need to parry to get through the game. So for the purpose of this series I'm going to ignore parrying and I'm going to take you through as if all you can do is dodge and harden for protection. However, I will say I recommend you learn to parry because parrying is a lot of fun when you can do it. Uh, it's also very useful for getting some health back if you need it. It's very useful for doing damage to enemies. And basically, if you can parry, the game's going to be a lot more fun in my opinion. For that reason, I'll put a link in the description to a video I made on how to parry. It's a 13 minute long video, but it does go into complete detail on the timings and how to make parry work for you. If you're interested in that, I highly recommend watching that video between this part of the series and the next. But if you don't want to do that, that's fine. Let's move on. There's a couple of things we do want to do before we round out this video. The first one is go back down these stairs and if you didn't already pick it up, pick up this item which is the Tatted Vestment. The Tatted Vestment, it's an item you can use to switch back to the Hallowed Sword if you're not currently using the Hallowed Sword. We are currently using it, but if you're using a different weapon, you can use the Tatted Vestment to switch back to it. So now follow me out of this building and around here. We want to go through this cave. Be aware there's a bunch of traps on the ground, so you can run to the right to fully avoid them. And if you pick this up, it's another glimpse. Now, there is a boss in the uh, next area. The boss is Grisha. We're not going to fight the boss here right now. You can fight the boss and kill the boss right now if you want to, but I'm going to ignore doing that. Uh, I want to make this boss as easy as possible. In fact, the part of this guide is about leveling up to make all the bosses as easy as possible. But what we do want to do is get what's in the chest that the Grisha is guarding. To do that, all you need to do is lure the Grisha toward you and away from the chest, and then roll through and quickly hurry to the chest. Or you could harden up, or however you want to do it, just lure the Grisha away, open the chest, harden so you don't take damage, and run back into the tunnel. The Grisha won't follow you out of that area, and you can just go straight back to our main structure here. And what we just grabbed then is a mechanical spike. The mechanical spike is basically an attachment we can attach to our weapon to get a super weapon ability. You can upgrade a weapon in a variety of places, but here we do it at this workbench. The weapon enhancement we just got is the first one, the mechanical spike. So you apply that to upgrade it by holding down your, your upgrade button. Now that the mechanical spike is attached to a hallowed sword, all you have to do when you're out in the wild is if you have two bars of resolve, which are the yellow bars at the bottom left of the screen, you can exchange those for your super weapon attack. And we'll be using that a lot against elites and a lot against bosses. It's a really good boss killer, that. That's why we went ahead and got it straight away. Okay, the final two things we want to do before we close out this uh, part one of the video series is we want to earn enough tar to uh, unlock those first two skills that we pointed out earlier, the skills that gain us more glimpses. To do that, I'm going to let you farm it. I'm not going to show that in this video, but what I recommend is just running around the structure, this Sesta, where Sesta Genessa is, just running around that and exploring the area immediately around this and uh, killing every enemy you can see, picking up what you can and, and whatever they drop, making sure you pick up all these task bores and welt caps as you, uh, as you can, put them on timers, grab them when they're off their timers, and just run around basically getting a feel for combat, getting a feel for this area. Don't stray too far, otherwise you might get lost, or if you want to, go for it, but I'm just suggesting stay in the immediate area until you've got enough tar to unlock those skills. We need 1100 for one and 1000 for the other. We almost have enough glimpses and with uh, with just exploring this area and killing enemies, you'll, you'll have enough glimpses dropped so that you can unlock both pretty quickly. So as soon as you have 1100 tar, go back and unlock the first skill. And then as soon as you have 1000 tar, go back and unlock the second skill. We'll take the part two of this video series up after you've done that. So I'll just leave this to you to do. All I suggest is keep looking up and making sure that you don't stray too far from this structure and get lost, but it's entirely up to you. As long as you know where you've gone, you can always run back and pick up whatever whatever you lose if you die. So I'll leave it to you to do that and I'll just skip forward after I've farmed the first thousand and I'll show you the unlock. 
So, but before I do run in to unlock it, I make sure I'll pick up another welt cap and a task bore because they're off the timer there. You can also see I now have 12 glimpses because a couple of glimpses have just dropped or I found them as I've been just running around killing enemies to get the tar. So that will happen for you as well. So now go see Sester Janessa. Yes, slowly. And we can unlock the very first skill we want which is accretion of yearning adds a chance for enemies to drop an additional glimpse on death. Okay, now that we've done that, enemies have a chance to drop glimpses on death, so we're going to get glimpses a little faster. All you need to do now is go and farm the next thousand tar again for the next perk we need. Once we have the next perk unlocked, we'll then be proceeding to do some more juicy stuff in the next video. So I'll assume that you've just gone out and farmed more enemies and got your thousand tar and dropped an extra couple of glimpses to get the six glimpses you need, and then head back again uh, to unlock the skill. And also bear in mind that every time you see Sester Janessa and talk to her, you will reset the enemies. So you can come back and see her, go out, kill all the enemies, come back, reset them, go out and kill them again, and so on. Okay, so the second skill we want is Accretion of Dominance. Unlock that, and between the two skills we now have unlocked, we can get a chance at lots of glimpses every time we kill an enemy or every time we kill an enemy after hardening, which is going to help us, up, help us to unlock all the other skills a lot faster than they otherwise might get unlocked. Okay, that's it for this part. Thanks for watching and we'll continue in part two where we'll venture out further to get what we need to start leveling up our sword and maxing out the damage we can do. I'll see you then.